Hey Amen. Glory be to God. This is Evangelist Jesse Green with Sound Doctrine Ministries. Hey Amen. This is my um, morning discussion. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. And with my own personal Bible study, glory be to God. Like I said before, I take mostly italicized words out. I leave some of them in. Hey Amen. To me, it show forth more power. So let us pray before I go into this word. I'll be at I'll be in Isaiah fifty-seven. And it's starting around about this 18th verse. So let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we ask you to bless, touch, heal, deliver, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Amen. Let's go into the word of the Lord. Amen. The title of this message is, I have seen his ways and will heal him. As it comes from Isaiah 57 and 18. I'm continuing on down in the book of Isaiah. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I have seen his ways and will heal him. See, God see our ways and everybody ways, but and will heal them and deliver them. Even though he may punish us, most of us may suffer. We may go through some things because we may be chastised, but God desires to heal and to save those souls or deliver those souls and heal them from their sin sick ways. Glory to God. And as you read on down, to, as you go down to the 19th verse, it says, I create the fruit of the lips. The fruit of the lips, the lips to bring forth, be fruitful, to speak fruitful things. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to, to that is far off, peace, I'm sorry. And to that is near. I just moved the italicized words out of there. Says the Lord, and I will heal him. Let me read that again. Isaiah 57 and 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to that is far off. No matter where you are, how far you away from God. The people that are not among us, God is saving them. They can be far off in far other countries. So God is saving folks Far off, we don't even see what God is doing. He did, he just not saving Israel. He just not delivering Israel. He just not healing them. He healing a lot of people that will come to Him. He said, "That's why I read. That's why I tied this, this message, the same as it is in Isaiah fifty seven eighteen. I have seen His ways and will heal Him. God see everybody ways. If they humble himself and come to the Lord." That's why this 19 verse, I create the I create the fruits of the lips that they can give me praise, that they can honor me. They can bring forth fruits that's worthy of repentance. They, their words can be fruitful to the point where they can be saved. Peace, peace to that is far off and to that is near, says the Lord, I will heal him. Whether we are near unto him as children of God or people of God, are far away. He, cre he created the fruits of the lips that people may be fruitful and speak words that would st cause them to be healed from the sin sick soul and know the Lord God and Savior, those that even are far off in other far parts of the country. So God is saving all over the world. He was saving all over the world then. He is saving all over the world now. Glory be to God. He's healing and saving folks right now as we speak. Glory be to God. Let's go to Genesis. I want to save you how God is saving and delivering. Now let's go to Genesis, Genesis 46. Genesis 46. And the 26th and the 27th verse. How God has multiplied his people. When they went into Egypt. When they went into bondage. And what did they come out, what did they come out with? God was saving even in Egypt. Let me say this. Well, let me read this first of all. Genesis 46 and 26. It says, all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt which came out of his loins besides Jacob, sons and wives, all the souls were six scores and six. Sixty, sixty-six people. So when Joseph, well, all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, 
Amen. And his loins besides Jacob, wives and all his souls were six, th six, th six or uh, three scores and six, which is which is sixty six people. And then the twenty seven verse and the souls of Joseph were born in in Egypt were two souls. All the souls of the house of of, jo of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were three scores and and three scores and ten. So there were seventy people all together. Of these two souls of Jacob and, 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 and Jacob and Joseph was two so it was seventy people, seventy souls or seventy persons that went into Egypt. Now you remember Joseph, what happened to Joseph? Joseph was sold into slavery by by his brothers, and he ended up in Egypt, but he ended up in second command in Egypt. Pharaoh gave him put him in charge over everything. Now, how many people you think God saved through that miraculously task that Joseph have accomplished when he, uh, when he, he, when he gave his brothers and sisters that prophecy that they will bow down to him. And then when he got in Egypt, a man, he was in prison and then he interpreted some dreams. Then his, his then, then, then Pharaoh's wife tried to, Apostle's wife tried to sleep with him. Pharaoh's wife tried to get with him. He wouldn't dishonor God. So a lot of folks seen the life that Joseph lived. He was even in prison over the whole prison. So they seen this godly young man. And many folks in Egypt gave their life to the Lord. They had to. You can't be around God's presence in the holy person of God. And not want to be partake of that. And then he saved Israel through the famine. He had the dream about the lean calves and the fat calves. And that's when he got promoted because he saved all the grain during the fat time. Then the times of they was flourishing. The first seven years was a time of abundance. Then the second came the lean, second seven set of years came the lean years. And Joseph was the head over Egypt. Many folks honored him. If they honored him, I guarantee you, many folks honored his God. Hallelujah. So 70 folks went in Egypt. 70 folks were in Egypt at that time. There were saints of God. And Joseph reigned until another king of Pharaoh came in and realized these people were abundantly in the land to the point where he had to enslave them to try to break them down. And the more he oppressed them, the more they brought forth more children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And through this new Pharaoh came the plagues to bring them out of Egypt. Hallelujah. And when they came out of Egypt, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They came out with resources. They came out with a mixed multitude. Let me share that with you. Let's go to Exodus, Exodus 12. Exodus 12, 37 and 38. Listen what it says. So there are 70 went in, but there was thousands that came out. And even a mixed multitude. And I guarantee you, after this plague, it was a lot more people saved during that plague. They didn't, they didn't come out, but I guarantee it was a lot saved during those plagues. When you see the miraculous power of God moving through the land, bashing their gods, their frog gods, their, their, their rain gods, their grain gods. Come on now, all these plagues that came forth, the now gods, the river striking the, blood, the river and turning into blood. All these guys was coming against their gods. You know these people was tripping like, man, we, we serving this God, but this God is destroying our gods. So I guarantee you God was saving even as he was bringing his children out. A lot of folks would get saved. The Bible don't give us, we only know in part what the Bible give us. God only give us the essentials that we need to know. Coming out of bondage. Going, and going into a land that flowed with milk and honey. When people saw this God coming through, leading them by a pillar by night and a fire by day, I guarantee you, hallelujah, I guarantee you, it was a lot of people saw this mighty God 
and begin to accept him afar off. That's what I read to you. I will heal him, those that are near and those that are far off in that 19 verse of Isaiah 57. God is healing and saving sin sick souls way back then. He was. What Jesus telling the disciples, the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, there's one preaching, preaching the, the gospel and he's not a part of us. He said, if he's for us, he's not against us. Let him preach. Hallelujah. Jesus, then Jesus told, then Jesus told, amen, the, the people, the Jews or his disciples, I have flocks that you know not of. That's not of this fold. I'm saving people that's not of you, of not, not a part of the 12 disciples. I got sheep that you know not of. So God is, Jesus Christ was the Lord God back in the Old Testament saving folks through the, through the plagues and everything they went, to, went, went through. And I'm going to show you that even more. Exodus 12 and 37, listen to what it says. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot, men besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, very much cattle. So a mixed multitude came out with them as well. Now I wrote down this, I said this, check this out. 600,000 men, not counting women or children, let's say 400,000 were married with one child. You will have 800,000 women and children, plus the 200,000, just say the 200,000 were old and not married. This would equal 1 million people, not including, not including the mixed multitude that came out that were saved. Even though they mumbled and caused Israel to complain. God brought them out of bondage and saved them because they followed the true and the living God through the wilderness. Fire by, fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. They saw him part the Red Sea. They saw him heap up the Jordan. They saw all these miracles. This mixed multitude in their offsprings. Even though a lot of them died in the wilderness when we got to the promised land. But I'm just showing you, God is, was saving people way back then multitudes. When you when he came out of Egypt with all them plagues, you mean to tell me them people witnessed that and then recognized the true and the living God and then accept him? They Everyone didn't come out of Egypt, but I guarantee you a lot of folks were saved through all those plagues that struck Egypt, especially the last plague, the firstborn. The firstborn ones that were born when they struck all the firstborn children, I guarantee you a lot of people came to the Lord because they recognized this is a mighty God come through and kill him. When he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. He put a lot of fear in their heart. They thrust him out, gave them jewelry and go, get out of here. I guarantee there's many people that got saved through that. Them, those plagues. Hallelujah. So it was uh, millions of people at least came out. 70 went in and million came out. He multiplied the people of God to the millions. That's why the king of, of, of Balak, Balak, the king of Balak, the Moabite, said these peoples are up on the land like the sands of the beach sea. These peoples are, mo these peoples are as many. Come and curse these folks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Deuteronomy. I want to show you something here at Deuteronomy. Years ago, I had realized this. I thank God for giving me the opportunity to share this with you guys. Amen. God is healing and saving, folks. Not only these times, but he's been healing and saving. It just went Israel. It just went the mixed multitude that came out that he saved. It was more people that he was, that he was saving. Through the conquest of of Abraham all the way up to this time, where I'm, where I'm finna read in, in Deuteronomy 32, from the conquest of bringing Abraham out, promised him the promised land full of milk and honey, all the way to Isaac, Jacob, all the way down to Moses, to his death, and, and beyond to the coming of our Lord and Savior. Many peoples had heard and seen, heard and seen of this magnificent God of Israel. Even though Israel wasn't a witness, God would bear witness to him for himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. So listen to what I'm saying here. Let's read this uh, Deuteronomy 33rd uh, chapter and at this first verse. And, and, and this is the blessing where with Moses, the man of God. See, Moses was dying at this time. He could enter, enter in at the promised land. You can read that up above 48 through 52 where he couldn't enter in because he didn't, he didn't sanctify the Lord of hosts. He didn't make him holy. So he could, all he can do is go look over a man in the mountains and look over into the promised land. But he got him to the promised land. But it was his time to die. Listen, listen to uh, Deuteronomy 30, the 33rd chapter in the first verse. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Check this out, y'all. This is, this is prophetic. This is some spiritual insight. This is a revelation here about how God been saving folks. Look who came with him during the Ten Commandments. Let's read this second verse, Deuteronomy 3, 33 and 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai. You remember the Lord came from Sinai, to, uh, to Sinai, and rose up from Zer unto them, and shined forth from Mount Paran, glory to God, and came with 10,000 of his saints. Amen. He, the Lord came from Sinai, rose up from Mount Seir unto them, and shined forth from Mount Paran. Glory to God. And came with 10,000 of his saints. From this right hand, a fairy law for them. And gave them a, a law. Fairy law from them. 10,000 saints came with the Lord. 10,000. That's a blessing. So that means... Not even the children, just the children of Israel. Listen to the third verse. He loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. So God was saved. God came back. Amen. During the time of Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 of, of saints. And, and at the second verse, from his right hand went a fiery law for, for them. He wrote the Ten Commandments. A fair, a fiery, fiery law. But when he was when he came, he came with ten thousand of his saints. So upon up on the time when Moses was up here getting these laws, he had ten thousand saints presence. So from the time of Abraham to the time of Moses' death, God been saving millions of people. He only had ten thousand come down with him during this time of giving this fiery law to his people. That's a blessing just to know that. Third verse again. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. He loved not only the people of God, but all his saints, those ones that saw the Lord coming through the wilderness, those Lord that saw the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those ones that saw all the conquests and saw how God uh, 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 did great, great things through the wilderness, Fed his people. Amen. Brought, down, brought Moses and Isaac and Jacob. Brought them all, all through the famine. Raised up Israel. I mean, raised up Egypt to the point where he spared Egypt. So when he came in and pronounced judgment on Egypt, he had a right. Because he spared even Egypt through Joseph. And through Joseph reigning as ruler of the true and living God. A lot of folks was up under him. A lot of folks served the God that he served. So as a thousand of people had sanctified themselves, set themselves apart for the serve the true and the living God. That's what saints mean. You have been sanctified, set apart. So when God came back up on to give this very law unto his people, he came with 10,000 saints. So it just wasn't the Jewish people that was God was saving. So people need to stop that. Well, I'm a Jew and them the other ones going to hell. God was saving folks all the time. He been saving for he came back with a heavenly host of his saints. Moses was at the bottom of the Moses, the bottom of the mountain. The church, the twelve tribes of Israel was at the bottom of the, of, of the mountain. And God came and with, with the ten thousand of his saints. Listen, for his right hand, a fairy law for them, gave them the laws to ten commandments. And listen what it said. Let me finish this. 
Third verse, ye, yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in his hand, and they sat down at thy feet. These 10,000 he brought him were sitting down at his feet. While he got, brought this fury law, the Ten Commandments. Shut, listen, yea, he loved the third verse of Deuteronomy 33. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. Can't pluck them out then, you can't pluck them out now. And they sat down at thy feet, shall receive of thy words. That was he was typifying. These saints he brought were set down at his feet. And they received of thy words, shall receive of thy words. That's a blessing. God was saving folks way back then from Abraham, even to the death of Moses, even as he, even as they entered to the promised land, even during the 400 year period to the coming of the Messiah to tell his people, you're without such excuse. If you don't believe on me, even though you're a Jew, you're going to burn in hell because I can raise up rocks to cry out to be descendants of Abraham. So you got to believe the Lord God who's been saving and brought you. Get out of your religion. Get out of this Babylonian Talmud, all this false doctrine that you picked up from Babel. And believe in Jesus. Stop adding and taking away from the word. Stop putting burdens upon the people and the widows with your religious seances, with your religious outward show. Hallelujah. That's what the Pharisee was doing. They would fast and, and make a scene, put ashes all their faith and just to be heard in the streets doing all these religious activities and still going to bust hell wide open if they would then believe in Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ said, now I have come. You are without excuse. If I had not claimed, you would be, you would have an excuse. But now you're without excuse. If you don't believe in me, because I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me, you're going to bust hell wide open like the rich man, a man that, that was rich and last was laid at the gate, last was in the bosom of Abraham, the rich man, these was Jews, went to hell. So God been saving for a long time. It it's been his will to save all mankind. It's been his will. Listen, look at the saints that he brought back. And he said, all the saints are in his hand. And they said, sit and receive, receive of his word. Sit at his feet. That's why, that's why Jesus made the people. That's why a lot of people came and sat at the feet of Jesus. Symbolic here. Everyone would come and sit at the feet of Jesus and hear the words. Even the 5,000 were here. Even the 4,000 were here as words. But a lot of them walked away. But that don't mean they didn't come back and get saved and get a life to Christ. That don't mean that they probably walked away then because they didn't understand. I pray that they got saved. But we don't know. God still is sanctified because when you experience Jesus, it sticks in your mind to a point where you're going to think about this. This man came and God going to begin, the Holy Spirit going to be begin to reveal things that people that are far off from him and those that are near to him. He's going to begin to reveal these things to him. He created the fruits of the lip that they may give him praise and give him glory. Peace, peace be unto them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to Matthew, this last chapter, this last verse. <clears throat> I'm sorry about my voice, but glory to God. I'm not going to be long here. Let's go to Matthew 15 about this Canaanite woman. Let you know he was saving the centurion soldier. God was saving everybody. See, these Jews thought that they, they wanted him to make him king. just They can just be selfish and, and, and receive from him for themselves. But he wouldn't come to himself no earthly kingdom on earth just for the Jewish people. That's why he told them, amen, glory to God. This kingdom is not, this is not my kingdom. When he told, when he, when he told um, uh, uh, Pilate, this is not my kingdom. This is my, of my kingdom. They will fight for me. He was talking about his millennium kingdom. He's going to set up another kingdom that all souls might be saved, that everyone can come and dwell in Jerusalem and Zion and be saved. And those that don't be saved are going to suffer the consequences. Because everybody's not going to be saved, not even all his people. They call themselves Israel because they're going on the ethnic, ethnic background instead of being born again like Nicodemus. Came to him by night and realized, what must I do to be saved? He said, you got to be born again, man. Glory to God. Let's read Matthew 15 and 21. Then Jesus went thence 
and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, or the region. So this coast means that outside of the district of, Sp of Palestine. This is the first time there was mention about Jesus going outside the boundaries of Palestine. And this was a Gentile descendant from the Canaanites. You know, the Canaanites were people that didn't have or didn't know God. They called them, anybody that don't know God, a Gentile represent dogs. That's why them false Jews over there are always saying the, uh, who worship the devil. That's why they always call, they call us goem, animals. Now you the goem because you're not born again. We're not animals. We're the creation of God. We're the children of God. We are saints of God. We've been sanctified. The devil is alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this woman was a Canaanite woman. Jesus went outside the, 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 the region where the Canaanites had inhabited Syria and Palestine. Before the conquest of the, of the latter by Joshua. Before the conquest of Joshua. These people were staying in this land. 22nd verse, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out the, of, the, of the same, the coast of the region, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She said, my daughter vexed with a devil. She recognized him as the son of the living God. That's the title, his, 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 his Masonic title, the son of David. He's the reign. He's the last king that's going to reign on the throne. When he told David that was there were there was cease not for a king to reign on that throne. Jesus was the last king that reigned on the throne of David, and there is no other king but him. He said she's vexed with a devil. Twenty third verse. But he answered her not a word. He ain't said nothing. He want to see if she. He God already know, but he want her to express herself to him. He wanted, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted the people to see this Canaanite woman's faith. I know the disciples looking like, let's, let's really read on. Let's just read it. Cause you're going to see what the disciples say anyway. But he, the 23rd verse of Matthew 15, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, or urged him saying, send her away. For she cries after us. These is followers. This is disciplined disciples. See, they was caught up under that stigma of we are the people of God. We are his disciples. And they had a problem with everybody else going outside of them being disciples, being getting saved. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus didn't send her away because they said this. This is what he said, 24th verse. But he answered and said, am I not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel? What you mean send her away? You urge me to send this woman away. She needs salvation too. Am I just sent to the lost sheep of Israel? Israel was lost. People say, I'm Israel, I'm Israel. You still lost if you're not born again. You still lost if you don't know Jesus Christ. You still lost if you're not filled with his spirit. And when he saved you, that's what he give you, his spirit. That sanctify you, that set you apart from anybody else. You might not even get to the church. You may be in a country far away somewhere. And God and you and you acknowledge the Lord. You start giving him the fruits of your lips. You start praising him. You might be far off. You might be near. And then next thing you know, God come in and make us a bowl with you and save you. So his disciples, he told them, man, what you mean? In other words, I'm not just sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I come to save all mankind. What you mean send her away? You tripping. Answer him. Man, Jesus. That's a Canaanite woman. She's she ain't no good. You know the Canaanites, man, they persecuting our people. Jesus is like, man, I'm not just sent to the lost house of Israel. Israel lost, she lost, everybody needs saving. <laughs> In other words, hallelujah. 25th verse of Matthew 15. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. She was a Canaanite woman, a Sinotian woman, that mentioned most parts of it, a, 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 a Syrophosian woman in the other part of the book of Mark 7 and 26. But she's the same woman. Then she came and worshipped. She recognized. You don't worship nothing. If she, if she, she, they've been worshiping false gods, but now she has turned to worship the true and the living God. Then she called him son of David. She knew he was the Messiah. She bowed down and began to worship him. 
They talking about sending her away. Jesus said, no, I'm going to show y'all something. I ain't just come to the lost sheep of Israel. I'm going to show y'all who I, I'm, I, what, I, what my purpose is, in other words. Listen to the 26th verse of Matthew 15. But he answered and said, is it not me a good to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs? Call her a dog. She's a Gentile. By right, Gentiles are dogs without God. Even Jews are dogs without God. Ethnically, ethnically if you're not born again, spiritually, we are dogs. We, 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 we don't have God in our heart, in our mind. We might got religion. We might got our descendants of our religion, like Paul was, or like Nicodemus was, but in the heart, you can be a people of God and still be a Gentile because you don't believe in Jesus Christ. Listen, because he said the house of Israel, she, they lost. Yeah, these are my people. They still lost. Yeah, they're my people descendantly. Yeah, they're the house of Israel, but they lost. Spiritually, they like Gentiles. They got dog mentalities. That's why they urged him to send her away. Don't want to have no part with certain peoples. You know, the Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. Hallelujah. Let me get out of here so I don't be too long here. 27 verse. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Look at his faith. She said, man, I know we dogs, we ain't that good, but I'm coming to you. I'm not no dog no more. When he sees faith, he's going to realize she's no more of a Gentile. She may be a descendant of the Canaanite family, descendant of them, but now she has become born again, a sanctified woman. Listen what Jesus said when he validated her faith. 28 verse, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt or you deserve. Here, glory to God. Here, you can have salvation. Here, your faith saved you. Your faith delivered you. This woman of great faith. And sometimes when the, when the satyrian accepted him, he said, the satyrian said, Lord, he said, Lord, my daughter is sick with the opposing. He come, and, come and heal her. He, he said, well, I'm on my way. I'm going to her. He said, no, nah, Lord, this Roman soldier, this Caucasian man. He said, no, nah, Lord, 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 I'm a, I, I, I'm, you ain't got to come to my house. I, I'm a satyrian. I got men. I tell them. To, I got servant. I tell them to go one, go do this, and they do this. He said, "All you gotta do is speak the word." Jesus said, "I never seen that much faith in Israel. None I have seen no faith as great as this faith that this man had. This man just told me to speak the word. Now you see when he said he gonna he gonna make us jealous with the nations that don't know him." So a lot of folks get mad when they see these white people preaching, these black folks, people, these Mexican, whatever they see, these, these old brown people, these old pink people, and they don't look like us. They get mad at them. Don't get mad at them. God is saving and sanctifying folks all over, man. Whoever he see, he going to heal them from a sin sick soul and save them. So let's finish this verse and I'm done. Then Jesus answered and said, it's 28 verse of Matthew of the 15th. 15th chapter, and I'm done. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. This woman believed to the saving of her soul. She was a Canaanite. Don't tell me God can't save, save, save those that were of a dog mentality of glory to God, of a, of a nation who don't have God. Just like glory to God, you know, you know Ruth got saved. She was a Moabitess and married to the family. Rahab was a harlot and married to the family. So we need to wake up and see God been saving folks ever since the beginning of time. From the conquest of Abraham to the coming of the Lord to where we are today. Amen. And her daughter was made whole or well from that very hour. So I pray to God and I thank God for this word. I hope this word encourage you. I hope this word have given you some spiritual insight to let you know that God is saving those and healing people from afar and near. He's always been his purpose to save and seek and save that which was lost. Not that that which was a color or ethnic group. 
But Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. So let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, Lord. And I give you praise and I give you glory. And I do bless and magnify your holy name. And I ask you to touch, heal, deliver, and set free by your spirit and by your power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless y'all people. Amen.